questions we are starting a question series in which we will discuss some of the questions uh, related to different topics of physics now we are starting with the classical mechanics and in this video we will discuss some of the problems of collisions in the classical mechanics so let's start the questions so this is the first question the question says an elastic balls are placed at rest on a smooth horizontal plane which is circular at the ends with the radius given as r the masses of the balls are given as m m by 2 m by 2 square and so on so they are n identical ball n balls these are elastic balls and the mass of these balls is given in terms of a gp geometric progression so the question is asking that what is the minimum velocity required to be imparted for the first ball you can see this first ball if you get some velocity let's suppose you are giving this velocity to be u or u1 you can call so this will collide with the second ball and the second ball will then collide with the third ball and so on finally this uh, collision will give some velocity to the last ball the nth ball and this ball will have to complete the circle so the question is asking ki what should be the minimum velocity given to the first ball so that the last ball can complete the circle so there are two parts of the question first to find the velocities of the uh, all balls and then finally to the last ball and what should be that velocity so that you can complete the circle so let's discuss this question one by one so the first part of the question is to find the velocities after the collision and for elastic collision we can use these two equations these are the equations where the v1 and v2 are the previous velocities or the initial velocities of the two colliding balls and this v1 prime and v2 prime are the final velocities after the collision so if we consider these two cases if the masses are same then we can say that uh, this first term of the equation one will be zero and similarly the second uh, the first term of the second equation will also be zero and if you complete uh, take the masses to be same then you can say that they will exchange the velocities v1 prime will be equal to v2 or the v2 prime will be equal to v1 you can see the examples if to ha you have two balls of mass m moving with a velocity 4 meters per second and 3 meters per second as they are identical balls they will exchange their velocities and after the collision this first ball will have a velocity of 3 meters per second and the second ball will have a velocity of 4 meters per second if you have a different situation where the second ball is at rest and the first ball is moving with some velocity 2 meters per second towards the second first ball after the collision again they will exchange the velocities and the first ball will become at rest and the second ball will take that velocity of 2 meters per second so this is just the uh, corollary of this particular equation now we have to use these two equations to solve our question so let's solve this question firstly if you use the equation you know that initially let's suppose the ball of mass m is moving with some velocity v and collides with the ball of mass m by 2 that was initially at rest so if it is initially at rest you can use that the v1 will be your v and your v2 will be zero so if v2 is zero so this term you can put to be zero and this term you can uh, put the masses uh, the mass your mass m1 will be m and your mass m2 will be m by 2 so from that equation you can find the what should be the velocity of the second ball so the second ball will gain a velocity of 4 by 3 b so this is the velocity now the second ball of mass m by 2 will collide with the third ball of mass m by 4 but this the ball m by 2 is having a velocity of v2 again if if you solve the equation for the velocity of the third ball you will gain that the velocity will now be 4 by 3 power whole power 2 v so these velocities are coming out to be in a geometric series so similarly if you keep on doing you can see that the velocity of the final ball the nth ball will be given by this equation that is 4 by 3 power n minus 1 times v so this is the velocity of the nth ball now we want this nth ball that is having the velocity vn to complete the circle so the circle radius is given as r so for that we can use uh, what is the minimum velocity required at the bottom of the circle so that to complete the circle so here what is what should be this u so that you complete the circle so if you solve this equation you can see that 
your velocity should be at least more than or equal to square root of 5 gr where g is the acceleration due to gravity and r is the radius of the circle so this should be the minimum velocity given to the ball so that to complete the circle so for this question we know that vn is given by 4 by 3 power n minus 1 v and this should be equal to square root of 5 gr and from here we can find the velocity of the first ball so that to complete the circle by the nth ball so it will be 3 by 4 power n minus 1 times square root of 5 gr so this should be your answer now let's discuss another question that is also related to the collisions in this question it is given that a particle of mass m that is moving with a velocity of v it collides to a stationary particle of mass 2m so what is the question there is a particle of mass m that was moving with some velocity let's suppose v it is colliding with the another particle of mass 2m that is initially at rest so its velocity initially if you write u2 it is 0 and u1 if you write the u1 of the velocity of the m mass particle it is v it is given that this situation is before the collision now after the collision the ball of mass m or the particle of mass m diverts by an angle of 45 degrees it means if this is the angle uh, direction of movement initially the ball of mass m will go like this and it is moving with a final velocity of v by 2 so the velocity is v by 2 and this angle is given as 45 degrees now we don't know what about the 2m mass particle so you can assume it is a m mass particle let's suppose a 2m mass particle is moving in this direction with some velocity let's suppose v2 and this angle we don't know let's assume this angle is theta so this is the situation now we know that either it is a elastic collision or inelastic collision the momentum of the particles before and after the collision will remain conserved and also we can then uh, take the conservation of momentum along the two directions along the horizontal direction as well as along the vertical direction so if we consider the horizontal direction initially the along the horizontal direction the momentum is only in the ball of mass m that is m u1 or mv so this is the initial momentum and the final momentum along the horizontal will be for the first particle uh, it will be v by 2 cos 45 and for the second particle it will be v2 times 2m cos theta so let's write the momentum in a vector quantity so that we can consider both the x directions and the y directions simultaneously so we are writing the x direction as i cap and the y direction as j cap so if i write the initial momentum of the particles before the collision it will be m v i cap there is no other momentum now if i write the final momentum of these particles so the final momentum of the particle of mass m will be m v by 2 now directions so it will have a cos 45 degree so let me write it here so p2 you can write as p2 is the final momentum or pf you can say so it will be m v by 2 that is the magnitude and directions you will say cos 45 degrees along the i cap direction plus sin 45 degrees along the j cap direction and also if you write the momentum for the second particle it will be mass is 2m the velocity you can assume to be v2 and i am writing it is a v2 vector so we can directly find the velocity of this v2 now we know that the conservation should be the momentum should be conserved that is the initial momentum should be equals to the final momentum and from this we can find what is the velocity of the second particle v2 so let's find this so this is the situation before the collision and this is the situation after the collision so the initial and final momentum should be equal so from this we can find what is the velocity of the second particle v2 so you will obtain v2 to be 0.32 v i cap minus 0.18 v j cap and this is the direction so you can also find this theta if you because we know what is the horizontal component of the velocity for v2 and what is the vertical component of the velocity so the theta will be 
the vertical component over the horizontal component. So you can find that 10 theta is actually 0.56. And this value is actually less than 1. We know that uh, for 10 theta equals to 1, the angle is 45 degrees. And if this value is less than 1, that means your theta will be lesser than 45 degrees. So first particle is actually moving like this at an angle of 45 degree. And the second particle is moving like this at an angle of theta that is actually less than 45 degrees. So this total angle will be less than 90 degrees. So this was the first part of the question. So you can see that theta plus 45 is less than 90 degrees. So the divergence after the collision between the two particles will be less than 90 degrees. If you consider the question, so first two parts are actually asking what is the angle of divergence. So this angle of divergence between the two particle is less than 90 degree. So option B will be correct. Now we have to find which type of collision it is. It is an elastic collision or an inelastic collision. We know that if this is an elastic collision, then the kinetic energy will be conserved. Means the initial kinetic energy will be equal to the final kinetic energy. But if this collision is inelastic, then there will be some loss of the kinetic energy. That loss may be in the heat, in generation of heat or in the deformation of the objects or any other losses. But the initial and final kinetic energy of the particles will not be same if this is an inelastic collision. We already know all the values of velocity. We know the velocity of the particle m that is vy2. We know the velocity of the particle 2m also after the collision and before the collision the velocity of 2m particle is 0 and the velocity of m is v. So we can find initial and final kinetic energy. So if I find the initial kinetic energy, it will be just half m v square for the particle 1 and second particle is not having any kinetic energy. Final kinetic energy will be given by for the first particle it will be half m v by 2 whole square and the, for the second particle it will be half times 2m and the velocity is 0.37 v whole square. Actually, 0.37 is the magnitude of this particular vector. So from here, you can see that the initial and final kinetic energies are not same. The final kinetic energy is actually less than the initial kinetic energy. That means there is some loss of the energy. And it means this particular collision is not elastic. It is an inelastic collision. There are some doubts that uh, the elastic collision or inelastic collision, what is the difference? The difference is that in the there is also a coefficient of restitution that is defined as E and that is velocity of separation after the collision. This is actually the ratio of velocity of separation over the velocity of approach. So if velocity of separation and velocity of approach are same, we call it to be an elastic collision. And if this value of E is less than 1, it may be 0 or any value, then we call it a inelastic collision. And if this value of E comes out to be 0, that means there is no separation after the collision, we call it a perfectly inelastic collision. So these are the cases. So from this we can discuss, we discuss that how we can solve the different problems of collisions. We will discuss some more problems in the upcoming video. Uh, thank you for watching this video. You can be a part of our different programs. You can join our test series program, interview guidance program. Also, you can join our programming guidance program.